Hello guys, uh, in this video we're not gonna go through an actual solver. I'm just taking the opportunity to reiterate uh, why I think uh, the switching and branching behavior it's very very powerful and very important. So today what in, instead of creating a new a new mechanism, a new behavior, we're gonna implement well a new behavior but um, leveraging something that we already know. In this case uh, the source file it's a simple FK chain all right so the idea here would be that imagine that this is uh, I don't know like uh, uh, the spine of a character and uh, something that is really hard to implement is um, is not actually hard it's it depending on the amount of transforms it complicates the graph a lot in a standard DCC application that's better phrased um, for example Let's say this is a character, and this character is jumping. So this is the this is the pelvis, and this is the end of the rib cage. He's bending that way, and imagine that from this point on, he's attached to something, and you need to swing it back. So ideally, you would want to reverse the order of this FK chain, right? So right now, we start from the bottom, and it rotates up above imagine that you have a different a different um, order now so this is something that mm, you know just trying to put everything together until we move into something way more complex um, imagine now that through a branch we switch how would that look like so let's jump into unreal um, and let's open the rig I need to make some cleanup here, but overall, this is the setup event. And let's have a look first at the hierarchy. So, in in this, oh, the controls are named twist simply because I copied the the, the previous solver. Um, I simply make it made a duplicate. So we have our chain of bones. There it is. Then. This is one way to implement it. There are many others. You can also leverage the spaces, but uh, let's let's keep it simple. We have one hierarchy of control that goes from this side to this side, and these are called underscore f for forward. Okay, and these controls do this. Then we have another hierarchy of control that is basically the same, identical. I on purpose haven't changed the shape. Because I'm going to try to make this look as if it is seamlessly happening. Then we have another hierarchy of control that goes the other way around. All right? So, one way, the other way. So, let's see with the SIDA event what's happening. As usual, I'm getting my personal name, which is in case it's twist. This node here gives me all of these now looping through all of these I'm replacing underscore env the underscore f control great underscore f control is giving basically here if I watch this value it's all these controls here I'm setting the control offset so the values are at zero in the initial rest pose from the transform bow so basically up to here I'm snapping all of these to all of these Second time, I'm doing it again, but for the B controls. So you could have moved this entire graph, by the way, inside the for loop, but I want to keep it like clearly separated. So you, you don't need the second the second loop, by the way. You can move this stuff inside here. Um, so, but yeah, I wanted to I wanted to keep the the things separately. Maybe I can say snap B controls. Bones. Let's say snap a controls bones. Okay, so this is that is the setup event. Um, and that's pretty much it. Now I have controls aligned to the bones. Great. Now, before we jump into the switch. 
Let's see what's going on here. Some very simple stuff. I'm saying, give me all the twist bones of type bones. Through them, it's always the same, guys. Through them, replace the uh, env and give me all the B controls. So this is one of those things that you can totally store as a variable here. I'm doing constantly in all other examples. I'm not doing this in here, but it's it's. I think it's good practice, not because the, the compiler does not know how to bake down static values, but rather for graph visibility. So you can you know you, you can remove all these nodes if you were to store everything in a variable. Maybe maybe I'll do that later. So through give me all the the B controls. So I have these B controls, and set them visible. Why am I doing this? Bear with me. Then get the, the transform control and connect the corresponding bone to it. Then, you see, in this specific case, I moved this, this portion of the graph, I moved it inside. Because you don't need two loops. So then, Give me, instead of these, give me the F controls. This should be F. F is forward, B is backward. Um, then give me all the F controls and set, set them invisible and basically snap them to the B controls. Okay? So in this very simple scenario these controls are driving two things these controls are driving the bones and the F control okay so without seeing what's going on here just just know that these bones here drive the bone sorry these controls here drive the bones and drive the con this set of controls but these controls are invisible okay Underneath here, I have exactly the same graph. It's pretty much identical. It is really the same, but I'm doing the opposite. I'm taking all... So basically, in this graph here, the F controls are driving... become visible. They drive the bones, and they drive the, these controls here. All right? So these two graphs, basically reverse it's one the opposite of the other the other difference is remember these controls are in a different completely opposite hierarchy okay then I'm embedding that into a branch and this branch is driven by a boolean control that is nothing else than a switch so before we see the final result let me Oops, actually, I didn't do that. Let's detach this for a minute. And let's say that the condition is is false. Okay? Because the condition is false, I, ex I expect these controls to be visible and these controls to be invisible. You can see that the actual UI is not selecting anything because these controls are invisible. And I also expect these controls to be working. Right? Now let's see what happens if I put this to true. It looks like nothing had changed, but I'm cheating here because these controls here are not the same. These controls are now, these are controls are visible. All right? But these controls happens to be in that position because I'm in the, in, in the previous iteration of the graph, they were connected to the, the other controls. But what I can do now is basically I have reversed the, the hierarchy. So I hope that makes sense. This condition now, I can switch it back, select these other controls, and keep going. See where this is going? Basically, this is a you can you can combine a, a swinging effect by changing and reversing the hierarchy. And this is something that it's like uh, quite, quite. It, 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 it's one of those setups that doesn't really scale linearly. 
uh, in, a, in a standard DCC application, while here this graph is extremely simple. And, and this is because I'm severely using um, loops and branches. And again, this video is, was meant to be another, you know, to, to reiterate what I said in the last video, that this, this, these two nodes, these, these kind of nodes here, this type of nodes, the, the looping, the collection, the looping, and the branches are extremely powerful. So I've prepared, and I edited the graph, so I may have broken something. I prepared a little sequence just to so show you what I mean, where I'm basically animating the controls and the switch. So we go up, we switch, we reverse, we switch again, and we reverse. And this is something that you know you can embed in a cre in a character or a creature. If this this uh, cre character or creature needs to swing a lot, and you need to reverse, uh, you know the the pivoting of where the spine is swinging. This is one of those ways that where you can achieve that. Thank you. Bye-bye.